Hello again, Bugs here. Thanks for your interaction with the last video. As always, every like, every view and new subscriber brings the support we need to help our community and our channel grow. With that being said, today I bring you the final instalment of our Armour Brief series. Apologies for not having a poll after the last video. We had a couple of other vehicles left in the list, but thought that we should end it on a vehicle that you can just about call Armoured. This is the FV107 Scimitar. The FV-107 Scimitar is a lightly armoured tracked recon vehicle in service with the British military. It is similar to its predecessor, the FV-101 Scorpion, but instead of having a 76mm gun, it uses a 30mm cannon. Falling into the Combat Vehicle Reconnaissance Tracked family of vehicles, or just CVRT, it was designed to be small, light, mobile and easily air transportable. Entering service in 1971, the Scimitar has been used extensively in engagements such as the Falklands, the First and the Second Gulf Wars, and in Afghanistan. A cool fact about the Scimitar is that with the wide variety of ammunition available for its gun, it has been known to, do, to destroy T-55 and T-62 tanks. The Scimitar was first designed to use the Jaguar J60 4.2 litre 6 cylinder petrol engine. Its primary weapon was a 30mm L21 Raleigh cannon, the same as the one on the Warrior. This gun could fire a plethora of ammo types. These included, but are not limited to, APDS, High Explosive, High Explosive Incendiary, and APDSE, which stands for Armor Piercing Discarding Secondary Effects. In its, its secondary gun is a L37A1 7.62mm coaxial machine gun. The vehicle was protected by only aluminium armour, making it a very light recon vehicle indeed. In 2010, a contract was awarded to BAE Systems that would bring about the Mark II Scimitar. This version was enhanced under its life extension program. The upgrades made were a new Cummings BTA 5.9 litre diesel engine with 190 horsepower. This gave the vehicle a maximum speed of 80 km an hour and an operational range of 450 km. It also brought about crew survivability upgrades in the form of enhanced mine protection and blast resistance. Also, modifications to the internals meant that the fuel tanks were better protected. It also added an air conditioning system and, oh, let's not forget, the kettle, as standard for those battlefield beverages. Okay. Now let's take a look at the gameplay aspects of the Scimitar. The driver in the Scimitar sits on the left side of the vehicle and has a health pool of only 750 HP. This is a surprisingly low amount for the cost of 10 tickets. This makes it as weak as the BRDM2, but costs twice as much. In terms of driver strategy, then it's pretty much just a matter of not getting hit. LATs can penetrate your armor with ease. Couple this with the fact that it is tracked makes it extremely vulnerable if you get one of those knocked down. The driver must make use of the vehicle's 80 km an hour and high mobility and small size. It should not be used to engage enemy armour from the front other than similar vehicles like the BRDM. It is best used in obscure and concealed positions to ambush these weak vehicles and on large maps it should be used as a scout. Now onto the gunner. This experience is similar to the Warrior as you have the same ammunition selection and unstabilized gun. The 30mm can pack a punch however, its 80 rounds per minute mean it is still able to do damage but takes a while to do significant damage. This gun, again like the Warrior, must be reloaded. It has 14 6 round boxes of both AP and HE. The secondary gun is as mentioned a 7.62mm coaxial with 15 250 round boxes. The gunner also has two sets of smoke launchers. The fact that the gun is not stabilized makes it difficult to fully utilize the vehicle's maneuverability. And so, as the gunner, you are forced to use the speed to locate good positions, fire, and then maneuver. Next up, the commander. Now the commander in this simi does not need a crewman role. This is a great advantage as it means the commander could take the hat role. This would prove vital to the survival of the Simi if it finds itself up against any other armoured vehicles. One issue about the commander seat though is that it only has a 120 degree field of view, 
that's 60 degrees either side of wherever the gun is pointing. This means that it has a terrible rearward visibility and is left severely exposed. Now similarly to other non-stabilised guns, the commander in the Simi cannot provide the hunter-killer functionality and to rub salt into the wounds the commander's periscope is not stabilised. So let us summarise. If we put the scimitar in the same class as a BRDM, then it is an exceptional vehicle. It can comfortably take on these vehicles and anything below. It is also very capable at anti-infantry operations and scouting for the team. However, the vehicle has been made with a cost of 10 tickets. This makes it almost not worth the risk as you can't, can cost your team valuable tickets if not played perfectly. This puts the vehicle in a weird position where it is great potential but it is punishing to play as every loss, which is likely to happen, is of grave cost to your team's chances of a win. If you want to hear more on this problem, uh, then you can refer to one of our videos where Salud goes into it in a bit more detail. And folks, with that, we are done. Not only are we done with this video, but we're done with this series. Thank you so much for your support over the last 11 weeks. I've enjoyed the opportunity to write and voice these series. Also, please direct some of your thanks to Salud for editing and polishing them. Now, with this series over, there will be a blank space in our upload schedule. However, this is likely going to be filled soon with another series that is yet to be determined. But as always, don't forget to leave a like and a comment with your thoughts. Also, you can join our Discord for more information on upcoming series and videos. Take care guys, Boogs out.